So uh, today is a special Sunday for us. For me, every Sunday is special. But uh, especially uh, because today we are going to um, do a different kind of sermon. Uh, it's sort of an interactive sermon, but also a sermon that has come through visiting uh, the mission fields. And um, as you are all well aware that we at Crossway, uh, we have this building relationship uh, with the Navajivan mission in Mumbai. And so in the month of April, uh, we took our fourth trip, this time 10 of us. Uh, we took our fourth trip uh, to Navajivan. And uh, today is uh, it's not just, uh, you know, presenting a report of what you know, happened at Navjivan, but it is also uh, a sermon, sort of, how God taught us the different things. And uh, be it spiritual, or be it many uh, other facets of life that we go through, through this uh, mission experience. And uh, so those who are uh, joining us online, or those who will see uh, this sermon in the coming days, uh, be advised that we are not showing the videos, uh, online, um, uh, videos of Navajivan or the photos of Navajivan, but you could watch uh, those who visited uh, Navajivan and you could hear them and their experience. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, I want to connect to the song that has been sung, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Um, every morning it's great and new mercies we see. And it comes only with a walk with God. We have always been eyeing up to God to be faithful to us. And most of our Christian life, you know, we spend looking up to God to be faithful to us and our needs. And like I prayed, sometimes we are driven by our greed and not by our need. And we don't understand the depth of how we have to be faithful to God. It's not just God being faithful to us, but we have to be faithful to God. And this trip, the mission trip, uh, is just crossways uh, way as a church family to be faithful to God uh, wherever we are and to what he has called us. And so here at Crossway, uh, we at least try to put into practice in some way or the other what we preach uh, throughout the sermon series or the lectionary. And so this uh, uh, Navajivan visit is a part of a long uh, series um, of preaching um, topics that we have taken over the years. And so we'll, um, that's why we have divided in segments where we'll see the different points of connection, different practical application of what we have been uh, preaching and teaching here at Crossway Family. Um, and so let us uh, try to understand the connections between Christian life and the mission field that we go to um, and the mission experience that we have. Uh, so let us begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, O Lord, and we praise you for this Christian life, for it is such a joyous life, O God. It's such a joyous life when we walk with you. Yes, there are problems, and yes, there are tensions, and yes, there are spiritual warfare, O Lord, but amidst that is the joy that you anoint us with, O Lord. And we get to experience the truthfulness of this joy and the depth of this joy only when we go out and try to live this Christian faith that we profess and preach and read from the Bible. And so we come before you, Lord. We want to thank you for all that you have taught us. And as this, our, uh, this your children share their experience and the different aspects of biblical truths that they have grown into through this mission experience, we pray that you be glorified throughout all this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So first of all, let me invite Anand. Uh, let's give a big clap for Anand, everybody. <laughs> Anand, uh, is, was a, he, his uh, mission trip was the first mission trip uh, that he did uh, for, for Navjivan. And he will bring out the aspects of um, how we as Crossway, even beyond Crossway, there are people who contributed to this who are not part of Crossway family, uh, Hindus, who are non-Christians, who have contributed. And, how, and we'll bring out this aspect of how we give and how it exemplifies the mission of God 
uh, and the evangelism of God through what we give. So I request Anand to come forward. Hello. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak about Nev Jeevan. Um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, I'll here. So I want to show you. This is a picture. Um, the first picture is of, um, this is the last day we were there. Um, these are all the kids took a group photo. Um, one thing before I go into donations, because first I want to thank you guys for giving. Your money goes very far in FG, everyone really appreciates it. Um, I want to tell you a little about the kids. So each, there's a, you know, around 100, 110, 108 kids. Each one has their own story, right? How they got to Nevjivan. Some of them were, uh, they were abused in their family. Some were sexually abused in their family, and they're brought to Nevjivan. Um, Jay Nutchin actually sat down and told a story. Most of the kids there, their parents were sex traffic victims brought to Mumbai from different parts of India. So they were tricked. They were told, you're going to come to Mumbai, this big, nice state, and you're going to get married, have a great life. And they were brainwashed in sex trafficking. And that's how a lot of these kids, those, those are the parents of these kids. So when I just want you guys to know where your money is going to, what these, <clears throat> what these uh, kids uh, have been through, because no, no kids deserve to be born like that, right? You want kids that be born and think the world is magical, can do whatever they want, but we don't know what these kids would have without enough Jeevan. So I just really want to thank you guys um, for giving. Um, and be able to see a picture of, of who you're giving to. Um, you, can go to the, <clears throat> you can go to the next slide. Um, just you know, So some of the funds that you guys gave, we were able to do um, a big trip to Wet Enjoy, which is the biggest water park in India. Um, we gave 45 kids three pairs of shoes. We did a big dinner for all the staff, for all the kids. Um, we did shoe racks. We did Bible for all the graduates. All the kids that passed their test, they all graduated. We all gave them Bibles with their names on it. Um, we give devotionals and books for all the, um, the parents that are housing all the kids. We give gifts to all children's staff. Um, so some of the pictures I want to show you. So this, the food here, it's really cool because this is like a gourmet meal for everyone. Like we were able to, I mean even us, like we think this is really good too, right? <laughs> but like these kids, I mean they don't get to eat food like this. So we're able to care this food and a lot of people here, like the kids, they, we gave them, you know, what we could. They couldn't give us anything in return, so they would actually feed us. Like they would take pieces of the roti and the chicken and, and they would try and feed us and none of us wanted them to do that. <laughs> so, we, uh, but they would like hold our heads and, and give us food because that's their way of showing love to us because we're giving. Um, there's a picture of these sunglasses and the uniforms. I think last year Crossway donated the uniforms. The glasses are some of the gifts we gave the kids. And you have to understand, these kids have been through a lot of abandonment and stuff. So. We give them, like the gifts we give them, we gave all 100 kids a bag with maybe $20 worth of gifts, right? Like, they will, they will hold on to these gifts. And if when Crossway goes next year, they're still going to have these gifts, and they're going to, because we gave it to them, right? And they, they kind of, because they have abandonment issues, they hold on to things we give, um, which is great. And then there's a picture of Sheesh giving a, a game. We actually went to all the home parents' rooms, gave them, like, games and gifts, and prayed for them. It's another way of using evangelizing and giving them things and teaching the, the gospel to these kids. Um, and then the top picture I just want to show you, there are a lot of teenage kids there. They're into like fashion, right? So you can see they like to dress. They're normal. They're not just sad kids. Normal, happy kids watch Bollywood movies, like to dance, like to dress up. So when we took them out to the water park, we went to an amusement park that was right across after, and they dressed up completely. You know they really appreciate us doing this. Um, you can go to the, the next slide as well. This was a picture of the water park we went to. Um, actually, the water park, and then the picture below is on a bus. We took a three-hour bus journey to that water park, and it's very dangerous. It was very dangerous. Um, we had three big buses full of 100 kids. It's bumpy, but the, Jay Nutchin was played uh, Bluetooth music, Bollywood, and we were, they were standing up and dancing. And as they were dancing, everyone's falling down, right? Like, all these kids are falling down, but the house parents... I want you to tell you, they were dancing more than the kids. Yeah. Like the house parents, and in the pool, you see in the pool, the house parents, they play uh, like Hindi music in the pool, and they're dancing. They're showing us how to dance. And um, I just want to highlight, like, those house parents are true missionaries, okay? They, they, half of them have their own kids, 
And they're raising them with the Najivan kids. And you can't tell the difference between the Najivan kids and their own kids. This is my first time going, I couldn't tell the difference whose kids were who. And um, for us to be able to give them this opportunity to have an outing, they don't get this. They have 12 kids. Like we have th two, three, we think we're busy. Like they have this many kids, they don't get a chance to go out and have fun like this. So it's really a blessing we're able to give them this. Um, that last picture, that's a shoe rack with the shoes. We were able to give shoes to everyone. It was cool to walk around and see them being used. Every house we went to already had the rack out, already had the shoes up. They're already using them. Um, and lastly, with the donation over there, we, we say we gave gifts to all the house parents and all the people that were working. They are, I just want to say, they're true missionaries. Some of these people have been here for 10, 12, 30 years, raising their kids in a mission field when they don't have to do this. They're smart, they're educated, they don't need to be there. They chose to raise these kids. Because you don't, you don't know what these kids would be without Najivan, right? And these are, these are the gifts we're giving to. We give them monetary gifts, but they don't get paid what they should, okay? Like we, so we're able to give them as a, a blessed church um, with that. And then if you, you can go to the next slide as well. So I want to show you the, those are gifts we gave while we were there. Like we had five days, they, they, everyone had a great time. It's a great blessing for us to do that. We also want to give gifts that are substantial and can last long. So the, the, the green picture there, that's the, the, metal, that's the, um, the, the metal case that we got for dre like a dresser. And it's super, I don't want to tell you, like there, was like there was one room we went to, they wanted to move that dresser to another room. And the seven guys that came to the, we couldn't pick it up and move it. Like it's that substantial. It's going to last. That's a substantial gift that we gave. And then the other pictures of the bridge we build, which is like amazing if, when you guys go. Like, it's gigantic. If you see, when you enter Nubjeev, and there's a picture of all of us around that plaque, that plaque says bridge donated by Crossway Church. That's the first thing you see before you enter Nubjeev. This bridge takes you. If it's flooding, they can't get to Nubjeev. Like, and they have, every day, five, six o'clock in the morning, people wake up, cross that bridge to get food for the kids, get water for everyone. If the kids get sick or they get hurt, they have to go to the hospital, they need this bridge to cross it. And we were able to provide something like that for them. That was really uh, substantial and important. So I want to you know, thank you guys again for doing that. Um, and then you can go to the next slide as well. So we have future projects. Um, these are some of the pictures of the houses we're in. These kids don't complain. This is us taking pictures of things we think they might need. No one complained, but they're in, you know, some of their houses are run down, there's holes in the top. Um, you can go to the next slide. There's a video on the next one. You can play there. As a father, when I see that, I see kids just playing. All the mothers that came thought that's a dangerous playground. Um, and they're right. <laughs> like, it's a, you could get hurt. So some of the things we want to do is like provide these kids. With pro one of the projects we want to do is to provide a safer place for them to play. Not some Ritz-Carlton nice tennis court, but like just something a little bit safer. It's on rock. Kids do get hurt when they're on there. They're playing. Um, things like that. Also, their water supply system is very they don't have a way. They can run out of water very easily there as well. So there's, there's things we want to do in the future to help Nubjeevan. Um, and with their giving, we were able to do a lot of these things. And so when you know, people like Matt come here and ask for money, like he does all the time, um, he's doing it for a good cause. <laughs> he's not, uh, you know, these, we, we as a blessed church, we, we need to give. Um, we need to seek out these opportunities and give. So again, I just want to thank you. And know when Matt comes up here and asks for money again, he's not doing it for no reason. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep... Uh, there's a, another Jacob that went with us from another church. Um, he couldn't come, so he's a video. Dear Achan, brothers and sisters in Christ from Crossway, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank God for the chance to visit Navjeevan, a place that I had heard a lot about and I've always wanted to visit for a long time. I'm extremely grateful to Crossway for letting me tag along, even though I'm from Farmer's Branch. You guys definitely made me feel at home. During our stay there, and our interaction with the kids, Achins, mission workers, staff, helpers. 
I saw the Lord's hand and his faithfulness at work all around. Our time was filled with moments of friendship, discipleship, and love. Singing songs, sharing stories, eating and dancing together, and simply having fun with the kids are gifts that I'll remember forever. Now I'm gonna share a few thoughts with you all. Some moments and stories that I found most memorable which strengthened my faith. During our time there, I noticed that kids would always call us bhaiya, didi, and you could see in their eyes a longing for us to listen to them, lend them a hand, spend time with them and give them affection, which are all things that every child yearns for. I felt a sense of responsibility a lot of these children do not have parents to look up to, and the way they see us with such love and respect was heartwarming. It made me realize how much stronger my faith has to be in order to guide and support them. I witnessed this close relationship between the children and Crossway members who had visited there often and multiple times. Having consistently visited and invested time with those Navjeevan kids, you build trust and rapport with the little ones to the extent that you are their fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, and siblings. And I'm also deeply moved by how our church had a vision to establish Navjeevan years ago for the children to be cared for, given safety, education, just to be loved on. In the Gospel of Matthew, as disciples are scolding the children to leave, Jesus says, let the little children come to me, do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. It is so clearly witnessed, the steadfast faith of the children in Navjeevan, with many hindrances in their lives, no parents, stability, safety, food, yet their faith and smiles shine so brightly. As the Lord has called us to be, called us to be the hands and feet, be his hands and feet, our Martoma Church has been raising children to adulthood from extremely challenging and heartbreaking places to places of healing and hope. They're turning into good adults. I'm humbled to have partnered with you guys in this mission, right? Even though, and I look forward to many more. I praise God for Navjeevan ministry that the Crossway has un undertaken in such a deep and meaningful way. And I'm thankful for the experience I've had. The Lord has blessed us in many ways. Let's steward these blessings to further his kingdom. Thank you and God bless you all. So as we, uh, before we go to the next uh, piece, so this is, uh, you know, I, if you remember, we had this series of money and evangelism. I think uh, Manoj took that uh, class and also we had a series on giving, stewardship, and we uh, taught about how giving uh, it should be biblically centered. You know, we all give. We all give uh, to those who are joining us or we'll see in the future. We all give, but uh, it won't bless us and it won't bless anybody if you're not giving in faith. It's very, very important. You can, you and me could be either giving money and saying, oh, it's for a charity, it's for a good cause. Or you and me can give and pray about what we give to the Lord so that it will be a blessing to whom we are giving. It will be a blessing to us also. And not in the terms of that blessing that we get money back, no. But we get the blessing of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the filling of the Lord back. And so in this connection of money and evangelism, giving, stewardship of Christian life, this is very important. We all go to perhaps, you know, those who are watching and we all go to mission trips, but this is what we have to ask. Are we growing in faith because of the mission trip? Or are we just visiting there, seeing, oh, and getting a fulfillment, we are doing a good thing and coming back? This is very important. This is a connection that the Bible teaches us that when we go for God, it has to make us grow. When we go for God, it has to make us grow spiritually. And the video that Jacob shared, it's his experience of growing in Jesus and making others grow in Jesus. The giving different things that we give, be small things or big things, that, that particular picture of Ashish praying with that. Are we giving and making others grow in Jesus? That's the challenge. That's the question. Are we growing in Jesus? And so what we do here at Crossway is that even when we prepare to grow, uh, go for mission trips, we start the prepare six months ahead, meeting every once a month, praying about, strategizing, and you know, doing all this thing. And after we come back, we do a you know, a debrief, 
so that to analyze how we have grown. And Jacob's video is just one video of how Jacob has grown. Anand, you know, Anand, what he shared, how we saw the connection of money. Money is gift from God among all the other gifts. And it has to be given for the glory of God. This is the purpose of money on earth, not just to, you know, we have kids, we make them available to all the great things that we do. But here are these kids in India and others who are around us. Can we give them the gift, physical gift, but also the spiritual gift? So as we go to the next uh, segment where Lisa will share with us about each children, and we will go into this segment of how the children of Navjivan grow in faith. So Lisa. All right. Well, I get the joy of sharing with you the stories of some of the Navjivan children. So uh, the topic is personal growth of faith stories. All right, so the first one is Precious Zainab. <clears throat> so the background for Zainab is quite unique. She's not a product of the red light district. Uh, her background is her parents tragically died and there was no next of kin. To make a long story short, she was um, uh, coming to Navjeevan, I think from an NGO, maybe a few days before we came as a team last year. So um, as we got to know her, Achen gave us the 411 on her. <clears throat> and then as we see, she's precious. Look at her smile. But um, she did have some behavioral issues. And we saw a little bit of that. Um, can you blame her? She went through a lot. Um, but anyway, the picture on the left is the picture we took last year. And that's my daughter, Naya. And um, what we saw and what I noticed about Zainab is that uh, she was eyeing Naya and she's extending her hand and on her, I don't think you can appreciate it, but there's a silver um, bracelet and dangling from it uh, is a cross. And she was just mesmerized by Naya, and then she just asked her one question, what's that hanging from your wrist? And Naya said, it's a cross. Um, <clears throat> I was scrambling to get my phone, <laughs> I couldn't get a video. Um, but I remember deep inside, a deep impression, I knew it was the Lord, he's like, remember this part. So I said, okay, I don't know what that means. Um, but as I see, that was like maybe do three, day four of her. She doesn't know anything about Jesus. She doesn't know anything. But uh, what I did see as an evidence over the few days was the Navjivan children and the house parents, they really invested in Zainab. Because, and this is insane, because for a lot of them, they're going through a lot of stuff, right? And they're not bogged down by their problems. They're just like thinking... I hear them saying, we, at least some of us, have moms. Um, we live in Navjeevan. We live in a good place. We got to pour into this girl. We got to love on her, even when it's hard, challenging. So fast forward a year later, or less than a year later, we come back. She looks a little older. The first thing that comes out of her mouth, like I'm seeing her. I know it's Zainab. I'm running to her, she's come running up to me, and I was gonna say, hi, Zainab, and she grabbed my leg. She looks up with those beautiful eyes, and she says, not hi, Didi. She says, I love Jesus. The first words. I'm sorry. And that made sense why the Lord said, remember the story. Then I said, okay, maybe she's Chuma saying it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let's see. As the days go on, she, she showed evidence of showing love to everybody else, like her age that just came in. So she's six, right? She's taking care of five-year-olds, and it's insane. And she's so vivacious. She's so lovely. And then there was, she got a gift from you all, one of the many gifts in the bag, a bracelet. It's a yellow, that's her favorite color, and there's a cross on it. She loves it. She will tell everybody, this is my favorite gift. So we were going into church, 
And this is what she did. If you could play the next clip. That's Jacob. Zena? Zena? Zena, oh, one picture, one sit picture, but one, two, three. This girl, that's her prized possession, and she gave that away. Don't worry, Jacob gave it back. <laughs> Jacob was taken aback. It says what he was talking about. I was taken aback because I'm thinking, this girl loves this bracelet. Um, but you could see their heart. They're very giving. And even what they have, they give away. Next story. Tanu. Uh, don't play the video yet, just yes, thank you. Now, Tanu. Tanu is an amazing young woman where she, you'll see her video, this is not Tanu. Um, she, when we met her last year, she was um, so taken by our group, but especially Stacy. And who wouldn't? And she calls her Amma, and she calls Ashish Appa, right? Yeah, that, that. And Gia, her sister. She will even say it now. That's it, that's my family. And uh, she's such a loving girl. And when we met her, we were thinking, wow, this is, this is so wonderful. So that when we came back, she picked up, you know, picked up where we last left off. She was just drawn to her, asking when she was coming. And um, as time goes on, we could see the friendship deepening, you know, that relationship. It's not a one-time deal. Um, so one day we decided, um, uh, Stacy, Cindy, and I decided to go to their home Hung, you know, we hung out with them. Uh, we did that over the days. We played with them, talking about that day. We did the devotional, and we said, hey, we're going to pray with them one-on-one. -on -one. So we divvied them up. So, so you would think Donna was with Stacy. No, she went to Cindy. And Cindy prayed. And it was really good. Because um, we prayed beforehand saying, God, you just got to take over. And God did. <laughs> um, as a result of uh, uh, praying, uh, Tanu said, I want to give my life to Jesus. That's it. And so we were happy <laughs> and rejoicing at that moment. Uh, but then just when we came back, uh, the house mothers, um, Smyrna, decided to send us a video because something happened. And uh, if you could play that video, now you could play. That's not it. Oh, God. Sorry. Uh -huh. I'll translate. Don't <laughs> worry. Tell me what you tell me. Tell me what this is what she said. They had to try that. I don't understand Hindi. <laughs> Cindy Didi prayed for me from my head to the toe. When she did that, I felt that Jesus truly came into my heart. Her prayer was meaningful and that at that time, I felt I was talking to Jesus myself. Prayer was very good. Praise God. That's only God, only God. Um, next story, Lily. Now this girl may be holding a bunny. This is the girl in the striped shirt, but she is one street savvy kind of girl. She's a girl that is the product of the red light district. She's straight jugular. She'll tell you what she's feeling and what she, what's going on. So one day we decided, okay, I had to go pick up a, a game, and it was left at our guest house. She insisted she'd come up with me to go get the game, and then I had another child next to me, and 
that was a blessing because Lily can't speak English that well, but she understands it. And thank God the other child was able to translate what this girl was saying. But I could tell the way she t talks, very expressive, like a Mumbai-ish type of go with the flow. She says it like it is. They're laughing because they know. Um, so as we're walking, she goes, you know, Didi, <laughs> I really appreciate you all coming. And I said, yes, we love to come. You know, it's a joy. Like, we want to be here. And she said, no, you don't understand, you know. You don't understand. We appreciate, we talk about you all the time. And um, I'm like, okay. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we think, you know, Crossway Church, we all think about you a lot. And she goes, no, Chichi, you don't understand. Um, people come. That's not a problem. Okay, people come. They come to us. They drop by. They visit us. They even come up to the foot of the door at the, and just wave at us. But they don't look at us. They kind of look at us like animals in a cage or a zoo. But you guys don't do that. You guys came into Najeevan. Not once, you came again. Not only that, you came into our home. You went into our rooms. You want to know our names. You sat with us. You ate with us. You prayed with us. We see it. And we love it. And we want to say thank you. You don't understand how much that means to us, how much you care for us. And in that, it just caused her to be like, I want to know more. I really believe the Lord is working in her heart. And so, what are these takeaways? How we all need love. <laughs> How we have to be patient in love, like story of Zainab. How to give love. When you're loved, the love of God, that's not from human love. It won't come from the world. It doesn't come through stuff. It comes from the Lord himself, and it has to come through people. And she's in it being loved. Sharing the good news by building relationships. It's not on the pulpit. It doesn't work like that. It's both that and meeting, building those connections that makes them pay attention. And I want to say thank you for praying, because without your prayers, this would not have happened. These transactions, these interactions with them, their hearts would have not been softened. They would not have listened. So we want to thank you guys. You guys are in this story. And not living, ca you know, living this life of Christ casually. We can't do it. It doesn't last. And I'm telling you, I mean, whether you're at Navjeevan or in your own family, you got to live life for him. There's no other way around it. And it makes me wonder, they're on fire for the Lord when they are. Like, I'm wondering, are we? Are we the ones in danger? So, yeah, God is good. So, that's my story. And as we go to the next segment, this is what uh, the question that we have to ask ourselves and those who will be watching us. Uh, what is mission? For that matter of fact, what is Christian faith? Mission or Christian faith, it is a move of the Holy Spirit. It is a growth in the Holy Spirit. And we as church here on earth are supposed to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. It was evident in the video that was shared of Tanu and the experience that she had when Cindy prayed over her. Cindy, how many words in Hindi do you know? Not much. Kuch kuch hota hai, kabhi kushi, kabhi gam, hum aapke hai kaun? Other than the names of the films <laughs> that as much her Hindi vocabulary. Yes, language will give us an edge, you know, it will definitely give us an edge. But if you and me want to do mission for God, if you and me want to make an impact of Christian faith, it has to be the move of the Holy Spirit. 
And that is evangelism. Gifts, be it money or things that we give or the language that we can assist them with, those are all tools. But the greatest impact is of the Holy Spirit. And so when Sydney prayed over her, that's a move of the Spirit that impacted her. And when these ten people go there, like there are only two people or three two who knew Hindi, but the rest of them, they don't know Hindi, they don't know what to speak Hindi. Language is not the mode of mission. It is the touch and the move of the Holy Spirit. Language will give you an edge, as is obvious. But that's what Pentecost teaches us. That's what Christian mission teaches us. We have to go with the Spirit, the move and the leading of the Spirit. And so we invite you, as Jacob came uh, with us this time, we invite you to be in this journey. If language is a barrier for you, let it not be so. If going to faraway places is a barrier for you, let it not be so. Just grow with the Spirit. And that's why evangelism is a gift that is given by the Holy Spirit that doesn't require any of the worldly talents. See the growth of Christianity. None of them knew the language, local language, but they knew the language of God and that happens in the Spirit. So next segment when we go with Stacy, she will share the greatest language that the world has ever seen, the language of love. So I invite Stacy for that. Thank you, Achen. So the topic that I have is relationships. And um, I'd like to say that if you are going to zone out in the next eight minutes or so uh, and hear nothing else, there are two points that I want to share with all of you. And the first one is that our relationship with the children of Navjeevan is God's gift to Crossway. And the second is that Crossway is important to these children. Crossway is so important to these children. And Anand, you said it first, and it was an aha moment for me. So thank you for bringing that out and saying that out loud. So this trip happened um, because of relationships cultivated with the children during our last trip. The girls in the picture that you'll show here, this, um, they're the reason why we went. Once children pass 10th grade, their 10th grade exam, they have to leave Navjeevan, and we may not see them again. So these girls, again, and the, t and the boys that graduated are the reason why we went back so quickly. And we went just in time because we wanted to let them know that we love them, and most of all, God loves them. There is something extraordinary about the children of Navjeevan. These children are very special to God, and it's a privilege for us to know them and to, have, um, and to interact with them. God's love, his power, his protection, it can be felt on the ground at Navjeevan village. For me, as I entered, um, so driving in, I felt like I was coming home. And I said that out loud, because that's how I felt. Um, Navjeevan gives me a glimpse of what heaven is like because of the overwhelming love, joy, and peace that we experience. And God is glorified and praised there. So, uh, so it is heaven for me. <laughs> So what I like to highlight are some special moments that each one of us were blessed to have. Everything that happened has God's fingerprints on it. He has used all 10 of us in different ways to make him known to these children and vice versa. Every picture that you see has a story behind it. We don't have the time to go into them, but I'd like to provide a glimpse of how um, our team engaged at Navjeevan um, and how God used us to help build relationships. So if you go to the next picture, um, this, this is Lisa's slide, uh, my slide for, on Lisa. Um, so if you recall, Smyrna is the single house parent who cares for the older girls at Navjeevan, and Crossway helped to purchase a wheelchair for her. Lisa's relationship with Smyrna goes way back and it continues to grow. There is something very special about this relationship and how God is using both Lisa and Smyrna 
to nurture these children. There's so much more to say, but not enough time. So we'll move to Jacob. Okay. So Jacob took a leap of faith to come with us. Jacob did not need an orientation. He was up and about and out before we, none of, any one of us got up, and he was just everywhere and doing everything. I think God showed Jacob how Navjeevan is different from all the other mission work that he has done, and I can't wait to see how God's going to continue to use Jacob to extend this work. Um, next is Ashish. Okay, Ashish is our official translator. Uh, God has used Ashish to help communicate not only with the kids, but also with the house parents to reaffirm God's purpose for them in a very impactful way. And you're looking at uh, Animish defeating Ashish in the game of chess, and it brings me so much joy to see that. Uh, next slide, we have Cindy. Little girls and Cindy bonded over painting nails this time. And it gives me so much joy to see how God used Cindy in multiple ways during this trip. And Thanu's transformation is just one of them. Uh, next we have Sajin. Uh, it is heartwarming to see how boys and girls equally feel comfortable with Sajin and think that he is so chill. God has given Sajin a very special gift, um, and that is to see the needs of others. And Sajin, in his own ways, will take hold of the situation and figure things out. So we could not have done a lot of things on this trip without Sajin. Next, we have Matt. <laughs> and Matt is the kid's superhero. Kids call him Salman Khan. Okay. I think that Matt may have had to try harder than he expected to win some of these arm wrestling matches. Those boys are pretty strong. Next we have Joji. Okay, so Joji's message to the children on Sunday was led by the Spirit. The gospel message was beautifully shared. He couldn't have done it any other way or any better. And Joji challenged the children to read the Bible front to back last time. There are some kids that did that, and he challenged them again this, this time. And Joji, yes, um, is also has, he also has some DJ skills. Um, what you're looking at in that middle picture is kids swarming like bees around Joji um, to play music. So the next one is, I believe, Jones. Okay, the little boys clinged to Jones the, and would not leave him alone. Um, the message Jones prepared for the children on what it means to have the Spirit of God was God-ordained. I have no doubt that the illustration brought greater depth of understanding of what it means to have Christ in you. So thank you, Jones, for doing that. Um, and next, we have Anand. Now, kids had two nicknames for a month. One is Shiny Bye. <laughs> they loved his head, and, the, and there are videos of them trying to like feel how it feels to touch his, um, touch his head. And the other one is Javan, which means the soldier. Uh, yeah, Anand uh, bought, brought another level of fun, and kids loved him. I don't have to say anything else, but we will just play this one video, and I hope you <laughs> And the next slide is, um, it's mine. Okay, so in this picture from the left, it's Sultana Chanda Jasmine, who asked for a Bible um, last time, after we left last time of the Etchens, so she's been reading the Bible, and it's me. And in the middle is uh, my daughter Tanu, uh, and me breaking down, seeing Tanu run towards me to hug me as she saw me the first time. And the last picture is 
Chanda in red and Priyanka in blue. Now Chanda's got a story and today's just not enough to go through and talk about her. I'll quickly touch on Priyanka. Priyanka is new to Navjeevan. She has an abusive father, so her mom sent her to stay with um, her uncle. And without fault of her own, Priyanka ended up with the police and was later brought to Navjeevan. She's one of the sweetest girls. She's so quiet. Um, and she mostly kept to herself and would not share her story with anyone. Achin had said not to give her a Bible when Cindy asked, um, and because we just didn't know how long she would stay at Navjeevan or what she would do the, with the Bible after she left Navjeevan. So we didn't do that. And when we split up, I had um, the group of girls that uh, only spoke Hindi or understood Hindi. So I had her and um, had a chance to pray with her and connect with her one-on-one. -on -one. Um, her prayer request was for her mother's safety and for her to be reunited with her mother. The Spirit of God was at work with Lisa, Cindy, and I as we spent time with, in prayer with these girls. It was an emotional but powerful experience for us and the girls. A few days later, I got a text from Smyrna saying, Thank you, Didi, for spending time with Priyanka and praying with her because Smyrna um, said that after all of the other girls went to bed past 10.30, 10, 10, 10 10.30, Priyanka came to her and asked Smyrna to pray over her. Um, so you can see how the Lord was working in her heart. Um, and Priyanka has been more joyful, um, and it has opened up and is talking more with Smyrna now. Um, Lisa talked about transformation, and we see a lot of transformation in a lot of these girls. And I want to say it's not any of our doing, but it's Christ working in and through us. Um, so the second thing I learned that I want to share is that Crossway is so, so important to these children. These children see the love that we have for them, and they know that it's genuine, and they, are, they trust us, and they love us. Crossway means a whole lot to these children. And a few of them said to me, similar to what um, Lily said to Lisa, when other groups come to visit, they say hi, and they, they say bye, and we feel like a museum. But when you come, you spend time with us. You come into our homes, you play with us, you pray for us, and you came back to see us. When our group got delayed in Dubai, coming back, um, I messaged Smyrna to let her know um, what was happening. And here's a picture that Smyrna sent back to me in a few minutes. When Smyrna shared with the girls that the group is stuck in Dubai, the girls decided on their own to get on their knees and pray for us so that we'd come back home safely. Okay, so, and when we got back, I asked Sajin, I was like, Sajin, oh my God, we were all so worried about you guys. You know, you were stuck in Dubai for multiple days. And he said, yeah, although they were delayed, thing, everything worked out well and given the circumstances. And yes, God hears prayers. And certainly the prayers of these little children did not go unanswered. So to close this relationship with Navjeevan, which is a gift from God to Crossway, is not a one-way track. It's not a one-way thing. It goes both ways. The children say that they want this relationship to last. These children know Crossway, the people of Crossway. They talk about us on a daily basis. They pray for us. They long for us to visit them. They are our own children. And the this is one of the most meaningful things that I've done in my life, and I pray for more of us at Crossway to be called to go and experience what we have experienced. Thank you. So we get a glimpse of what is church. Is church a group of same ethnic groups, for example, Malayali groups coming together and worshipping? Is church a group of 
same linguistic speaking people coming together and worship same generational like be it english or be it second generation yes i do recognize that crossway started with that driving force of being a second generation church but what is church in the bible look at pentecost people from all the nations coming together irrespective of their language irrespective of their culture and worshiping god look at the vision in revelation tribes from all tribes people from all tribes and when this mission happens when we go to navjivan and all the pictures that you see these are members of crossway who might be second generation who might be in a culture born and brought up here or not mixed culture but they are going and building relationships in christ that's church that's church praying with children or house parents who are from different cultural backgrounds different languages and it happens through the move of the spirit building relationships and this is my vision for crossway that crossway makes such communities as they are doing in navjivan but also here in dallas that we the church the marthoma church makes communities driven by the vision of church in the bible and that will happen only in the spirit and as we go into the spirit led i invite cindy or when we see all this physical thing there's a lot of things happening in the spiritual world to stop this so i invite cindy to share that segment <clears throat> all right if we can get that first picture up yeah all right ephesians 6:16 in all circumstances take up the shield of faith and which you can extinguish uh, all flaming darts of evil of the evil one throughout this trip um we talked about a lot of the relationships and love and glorious things and it was great but guys it was very um apparent how much the enemy tried to distract us but with um all glory and honor i can stand here and say the lord triumphed and he built up our faith so that first picture was the very first group picture that we took on our way to um navajivan that's at the airport but if you look closely somebody is missing and uh our beloved stacy is missing there so uh in the midst of this we were all checking in you know getting all situated we all one by one families just went in and i'm sitting there with lisa and a few others and we get this text message from stacy saying hey guys i'm not going to be able to make it they're not letting me through because of some visa uh discrepancies and i'm like is she joking she like trying to prank us what's going on like i was like stop you know whatever and then she continues on to message us and i'm like oh my god this is serious they're not letting her through and we felt so defeated because there's just nothing we can do with TSA and you know their rules and what not um and i remember lisa was like stop let's just let's pray and we prayed oh, we sitting at that same table we all prayed together and after we prayed i was i we felt this sense of like okay relief i don't know how it's going to happen uh we checked the how if she can do an e visa on time it was not like we were not getting the windows open it was everything was shutting down on us but i don't know how but we felt this relief that stacy was going to make it she was going to make it on this uh trip and she was going to get to navajivan um so our journey started rough already um our flight uh became got delayed uh there were some weather changes our um if you go to the next side so uh that's a picture that's not our flight but um <laughs> our flight got struck by lightning while we were up in the air and um uh, we felt the turbulence i really didn't know what was going on sajan said he saw the light and i was like okay i just turbulence whatever uh minutes later the captain gets on the you know intercom and is like hey everything is okay we did get stri stricken by lightning but we're going to continue on and i'm like we have another 12 hours to go are we going to you know like it was just fear after fear it was just the enemy coming to just like distract you and um i remember walking in the airlines cuz you've got to get up every few hours and lisa 
is glued to her Bible the entire, I think, flight there. And um, it was just obvious how, like, the enemy was, like, just trying to distract. Like, my, all of a sudden, my Bible app stopped working, you know. And I'm like, okay, I can't read my Bible, but I'm going to pray. So the whole time getting there, it was just very, it was a stressful time. Uh, throughout the journey, we're getting messages from Stacy about her difficulties of getting her visa. She can't get a hold of anybody. She's on the phone all night just trying to get a hold of somebody from the embassy to get her visa fixed. Um, and it just so happened also it was uh, Eid season, right? So it was an Indian holiday. Um, so all the offices are closed. And it was just, it was a mess. And... Um, Again, we didn't know how it was going to happen, but she was going to make it because what she did in faith was before she left the airport that day, she booked the next flight the next day, the same time, because regardless of how she was going to get there, she was going to take that next flight to India. And um, I have to say, though, the angels were um, all around us because she had the right people at the right place, um, shiny um, um, Jacob's wife was there to help her, assist her, take her back home, take her back to the airport in the morning. It, it was, she just did, I mean, the right people, Achin was there to support her as well with all the different things that she needed. Um, and the devil totally did not win that battle because Stacy made it to the next flight the next day, the next picture, and she was able to join us. Uh, uh, there was like a big joy to have her uh, come and pick her up from the airport. So it was very evident um, that y'all's prayers and the prayers of our warrior, like prayer warriors, uh, were night and day, I know, praying for us. And, um, you know, just to have God providing the right people at the right time for us and giving us that faith to continue on and to build that, hey, we're going to continue on to this mission and nothing is going to stop us. So slide two. So this is um, Matthew 9, 29. And when, then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, uh, it be done to you. So guys, this trip, last year I went, I didn't have any problems. It was great. This trip, I got sick. And um, a little medical history on me. Um, I'm a person with a normal low blood pressure. So what that means is if any distress on my body or I get sick a little bit, I'm out. I'm passed out. I, I, I can't handle anything. You know, I at times had to go to the hospital, get IV, all this kind of nonsense. I'm, I'm a mess when I get sick. Um, so long story short, um, I, I've gotten to a point where when I know my body is not going to function, I can, I've I come to know that, hey, I can tell the person next to me and let them know, hey, I'm about to pass out. I need you to hold on to me. So that's how good I know like how my body reacts. So uh, whatever the case is, I feel like this was a personal attack possibly on me. The enemy just trying to distract me and say, no, you can't handle this is because nobody else got sick. We all ate the same thing. Uh, but I uh, had that porota and chicken curry and uh, woke up at 3 a.m. and just started throwing up. And so um, Anyways, uh, I was depleted. <clears throat> so the next day was Sunday. Um, I woke up. Everybody had service was like at 7 a.m. or something, and everybody woke up at 6. And I was like, there's no way I can make it to church. Um, I'm just going to lay here. You guys go. And at, after church, there was a, um, um, a Christian magic show going on. And there was all kinds of stuff, programs just scheduled for us, right? And in my mind, I'm laying there weak. I can barely get up. I can barely get to the bathroom. Um, it was I, in my head, like I kept telling Sajin to go, go to church, go to church. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll call you if anything. But I had a fear in me that I'm not going to make it. You know, I was, I was fearful that they're going to come back and they're going to find me passed out in the bathroom or something is going to happen. But I just kept on praying. I'm like, Lord, just, I, I need to hold on. I need to hold on. And, um, up until like, I think around 12 o'clock, I had um, Koshi Uncle and Jolly Auntie, who are uh, the head leaders there, without even telling, or I didn't even tell anybody, um, they brought Kanye for me and to drink. And even Masi that was there that 
She doesn't speak a, a, a lick of Hindi, and I don't speak Hindi. Or I'm sorry, she doesn't speak English, and I don't speak Hindi. So I, she kept knocking on the door asking what's wrong, and I didn't know how to communicate to her. And I, then Google Translate's amazing, so I pull that up and it explained what happened and she brought like lemon water. I mean, it was just amazing like how they took care of me and took me in. Um, so after all that, it was lunchtime and uh, we were about to eat the kanyi and everything and um, I came out of the bed and uh, tried to fight it out and hang out with the rest of the crew. Uh, I sat down and I couldn't remember if it was Stacy or, or Lisa that was sitting next to me. I, I turned around, I was like, I'm gonna pass out and um, someone needs to come and get me. So I think Sajan and Lisa like, literally carried me into our, my bed and I sat me down and Lisa goes, I'm coming right back, stay right there. Like, don't lay down just yet. I was like, okay. I'm like, I'm depleted guys, I'm, I'm done. And um, she brings out this water bottle. It's a Kroger water bottle, right? Just a uh, regular. My first thought was like, how did she smuggle this in? Like, how did she get this here? And I was like, because this is not the Indian water bottles that we've been drinking from. And um, she just handed it to me. And she said, um, there is zero magic in this. This has been blessed and anointed. Uh, drink until you're satisfied. And I think I, I wasn't even, the, I just drank it. And I think I drank one third of the bottle. And um, she prayed over me. And... Um, uh, she said, um, you know, it, she prayed over me and she basically was saying, you know, remove any of the uneasiness in my body, remove the nausea, remove, you know, um, any ill feeling, give me the supernatural strength I need. And throughout her prayer, I kept just saying, I believe. <laughs> I believe. And I said, I know my mission was not to come here and lay in a bed or go to the hospital. My mission was to spend time with the kids. And I kept saying that in my head. So right after prayer, um, I was like, you know, they, I was like, go back and lay down. I was like, no, I think I'm good. I felt good. And I was like, well, let's get up. And Sajan was like, nope, I'm not going to have you fall. I'm going to need you to lay down for at least a few minutes. And the good wife I am, I listened. And um, I lay down for about 10 minutes, and I heard everybody else in the living room, and they were talking and laughing, and I'm just like, I'm jealous inside because I want to join them. And I'm just like, this, I'm not here to lay down. I can't do this. Um, so not even 10 minutes passed. I got up, and I joined the crew. And I joined them. I was fine. I felt completely OK. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel weak. Um, I didn't feel anything. And even that night, I, I ate a full meal, like a regular meal. And um, the next day, we were going to the water park. And um, sorry, I think I'm missing the picture. So the first picture, sorry. <laughs> Kept telling my story. So that's right after I had, um, had my issue. And I was like, I'm going to join the group. I went outside to hang out with the girls. I got my mandy done from the girls. Um, and then uh, even that night, the next photo, is we had a mela where we were past, they did a whole dance uh, thing for us and uh, we were able to pass out the gifts and everything. So this, I was able to join this and I was, as you could see, I look terrible, but that's, I mean, I was ready to go. Um, and then uh, the next day we were on our way to the water park. You can play that video. <clears throat> so guys, this is, oh, okay, I thought it was on mute, but maybe it didn't make it. Um, but guys, this is what we ate. After my stomach issue, uh, I went ahead and I was like, I remember Ashish and Jones and everybody was like, Cindy, I wouldn't do it. I would not eat it. You just got sick. And I'm like, nope, I've been anointed. I am going to eat the food. So we did. Um, yeah, you can see how he's using his hands and everything, guys. Um, you can do the next photo. Oh, no, no, sorry, the photo. Back to the screen, yeah. Sorry, I made mine a little complicated. 
So the next couple of photos is basically um, me, Stacy, and uh, Lisa eating, um, I forgot the name of it, the Vada, Vada, what is it? Vada Vava. And then there's Jones having it, and then the next photo is Anon. Like, we, I wasn't the only one with a sensitive stomach here, guys. These guys are pretty <laughs> sensitive too. So, and I have to say, praise God, nobody got sick. Everybody did very well. Um, and then, of course, two days later, um, another short testimony I'll say is um, our sister Stacy got sick. She, um, that morning, she woke up and she was feeling nausea and not feeling well. And first thing, Lisa grabbed me and said, let's go, Cindy. We're, we're going to do this. We're going to pray over Stacy. So uh, we went to Stacy. We told her the same thing. Um, Lisa was like, there's zero magic in this water and I want you to believe and drink. And we prayed over her and she was, drank it and literally, uh, we were said the same thing, go lay down. And she said, uh, nope, I'm ready to go. So that's her, uh, completely healed within minutes and uh, with a bunch of girls. And that's the night we were able to go, you can do the next few slides, uh, pictures. Uh, she was able to give her message that night as well. Um, and the devil did not stop us from doing that. And she was able, the next picture is also her praying over um, some of the girls. And so then, um, okay, next. All right. Um, sorry, Ajin's making me nervous. He's like telling me to hurry up. Okay, so even with this, yeah, okay, so this is Dubai. We'll skip on to that. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. You can play that video. So uh, on our way back home, uh, there was quite a few uh, text messages that we got, and maybe many, many of you guys saw this, and we saw that this video was happening. Dubai all of a sudden became flooded, and so um, uh, this, you guys have to understand, like, Dubai has never experienced this in, their, in many, many, over 75 years. We had one year's worth of rainfall in one day. And um, we, our flights were delayed, uh, but somehow we landed in Dubai. And once we landed in Dubai, we were like, it, the airport was crowded. We didn't really know what to do. Um, they didn't cancel our flight at the time, so we had some time at the airport. And... Um, we just happened to be walking through, and uh, we Sajin was talking to Matt and everybody and saying, hey, we need to find a driver. That The Uber line is super long. Uh, there's no way we're going to make it. Um, and a man named Muhammad just started walk by, by us and was like, do you need a ride? And as creepy as that sounds, we were all like, yeah, we do. We need a ride. Can you hold seven people? And uh, he had a van that held us. This is us sitting in his van. And this is us traveling through Dubai. We're literally in water. And um, so it was real, guys. Everything, all the stuff that you heard, it was totally real. Um, and when we talked about the devil trying to distract us and defeat us, um, when we got back to the airport, it was even difficult to get back in. We couldn't, we had Jones stuck in the airport. We had to get, reconnect with him. Um, and we finally made it in. And 3 a.m. or 2 a.m., we all of our flights got canceled, and nowhere to go, no hotels. There were zero Ubers. Um, and Lisa had an amazing cousin that lives in Dubai that happened to be 10 minutes away. Uh, this is Dawn. It's the next slide. Um, this is Dawn uh, and her family, and um, they were basically our angels that God sent to us. These are our angels that came to us to save us. Um, they came at 3 a.m., picked us all up in two cars, um, took the risk to do that, one, and came and picked us up, gave us a place to sleep, gave us food to eat. Um, we were able to take a shower. Um, and even though we were scarce on clothes, uh, we made it and we survived. Um, these are all God's blessings that he gave us, like throughout our journey and throughout the bumps on the roads that we have, it was still evident that he, God sent us the right people at the right time to protect us. So um, none of this would have been uh, possible without y'all's continuous prayers. So thank you. Hey guys, good, good morning. I'm gonna be closing out real quick. Um, before we do, I have a quick story to share, and then after that, um, I'm going to issue you guys a, a challenge, right? Um, so 
I don't know how many of you guys have ridden a bus in India, but uh, if you have, you might remember there are usually like two people that are associated with a bus, right? One, you have the driver, and obviously you need the driver. He's the one that controls the bus, and he's going to get you to where you want to go. But then they have this other guy, right? And, and, and they call him the Kili, okay, the Kili. <laughs> and um, this Kili guy, number one, he smells really bad, okay? <laughs> But more importantly, um, what this guy does, his job is to do whatever the bus driver wants him to do. He rides up and down the bus, and he, he walks around, and he uh, you know, opens and closes the, the windows, and he uh, collects the tickets, I guess, and he moves the luggage around. Um, he's just doing whatever. He goes back and tells the bus driver whatever's going on, right? Um, so you can kind of say that this Killy guy, he's kind of an extension of the bus driver who's in control. He's just doing like whatever the bus driver needs him to do. He's another pair of hands and feet for the bus driver. And in a lot of ways, you know, other than the smelly part, a lot, we're kind of like Killies, right? Um, Jesus is in control. He's kind of like the driver. And... Um, but we are like his hands and his feet. We're an extension of Jesus um, in this world. So that makes us all kind of like we're Achilles for Jesus. Um, now, so we've heard from a number of our brothers and sisters, you know, that have got, gone on this trip. Um, and they've been able to become kind of like Achilles for Jesus in Navajim, right? And so, but the fact is that God is calling all of us to be his hands and feet. Um, and we all know that from day one in Crossway, we've been talking about, man, how much we want this church to be a, a church that's doing ministry, that's doing outreach, outreach. And I think we've come to this point, I think with Minad and Shirley and so many other people, we've got a lot of opportunities here. We've got uh, uh, the nursing home ministry. We've got the food pantry ministry. We've got a homeless ministry. We've got a street evangelism ministry. We've got the... Native American ministry that Shiva and Niven are doing right now. We've got Navajiv. And so we've got all these ministries that are available. Now, if you can kind of stop and imagine this, you can think about all of these ministries as being like a bus. <laughs> and, and, and Jesus is the driver of all of these buses that are going out there, right? But if you want to be a Killy, you've got to get on the bus. You can't have a Killy without a bus, and so, um, it, you know, you just, that just doesn't make any sense. And so in the same way, if we're followers of Jesus, we have to participate in, this, in, in a ministry, in some kind of outreach, because it just doesn't make sense if we don't. So this morning, I want to challenge everybody here to be, kind of get on a bus. So whatever outreach that you're interested in, just uh, start doing it. And, you know, you can join into multiple of these outreach ministries and whatever you love to do, um, you know, um, that's one that, that you should participate in. Whatever you genuinely love to do, get involved and get plugged in and, and get into it. So let me just close off here. I'm just going to read this one verse um, and, and, and close out in a word of prayer. It says, go, therefore, you got to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. All right, so let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity that you've given us, God. Thank you for, uh, Lord, being the driver of all the, the outreach and the ministries and everything that we're able to do. God, we just want to be your hands and feet. We want to be your Achilles, God, that um, are an extension of you. And so, Father, I, I thank you for, uh, Lord, um, all that you're doing throughout the world, whether it's with kids or adults or, or uh, you know, whoever that you're reaching out to, Father. And we thank you for using us as well um, for, your, for your glory and for your kingdom. And so, Father, I just praise your name. We give you all the glory for all that you have done. It is because of you. You're the driver. You're the controller of all of these things. And uh, we just want to commit ourselves to you. We pray for all of us here that we would have an interest in doing your work and doing your hand, being your hands and feet. Give us a desire for that and, and help us to obey your command here to go 
and make disciples. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.